greetings everyone welcome back to our kingdom honor episode uh, thank you for joining us and we hope you enjoy yourself this is a continuation of our last episode kingdom honor as i said uh, just a quick quick rehash on what we spoke about last time we dealt with the scripture in first peter chapter 2 about verse 17 we said honor all people love the brotherhood fear god honor the king Amen. So what we, we dealt with, we're dealing with, uh, we are, we're still on the dishonor part, the impacts, the influences of dishonor and what it means to dishonor. And we're looking at it not in, a, in, in necessarily on the respect part, but we're looking at that honor part, holistically speaking. And we're dealing with a lot of things in, in, in that part. And we're also mentioning the issue that when we look at men, we, 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 we are not just looking at the man, and when we choose to dishonor the man, we are not just dis uh, dishonoring the man that we are looking at, but we are choosing to dishonor God, the maker and the creator of the man you are looking at. And we also mentioned in Fundisuguti, the God we serve is the God who chooses to work in systems and in structures. He plays structures and he plays systems to function and to work in his kingdom. And if we dishonor those systems and those structures, we are losing God completely. And that is the issue we are having in our generation and in our time because we are failing to understand what systems are in place and therefore we dishonor everyone we meet because we want everyone to be in our own standards. We, we put everyone, we want to put everyone in certain standards that we can recognize in a sense that, okay, this is God or this is not God. And when we see something that doesn't seem like it's God and then we choose to devalue it. And this is the funny part about God, as we mentioned in our last episode, that he chooses to use the foolish things. Yes. And it's, 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 he's God like that. That's how you you know, it's, it's, he's cool like that, as they say, you know, <laughs> because he chooses to use the foolish things, something that might not be in your standards but he'd use that thing to usher you and to propel you into your destiny. And that's the kind of God we are serving. And we're still in the issue of dishonor, sir. Yes, yes, we are. We said uh, greeting to everyone. Let's greet our viewer. And um, <laughs> Amen. What, a, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a topic. Uh, you know, kingdom honor, we said that the whole infrastructure of Amen. the kingdom is built on honor. When you don't understand that, you... you, you <laughs> your life That's will be true. difficult. That's Jesus true. came and demonstrated that mm. by honoring a man. That's we true. saw Jesus for 30 years living under closed heaven. Mm. He needed to That's honor true. a man for him to, for his ministry. For him to, to begin. Mm. God sometimes places us under men of God. Sometimes we dishonor them. Mm. When you look at them, they don't make our, meet our standards. We undermine what they are saying. And God did it purposely. <laughs> so we end up messing up our destiny. Mm. So maybe just because where we've just read, we were looking at the impact of dishonor. We mm. saw how Jesus, the miracle worker, mm. the miracle worker himself, Amen. could do nothing in a particular area because he was dishonored. Was so the, the, the impact of dishonor is severe. Mm. Hallelujah. So the, Hallelujah. Se the second one, I want us to look at your prayer will be hindered due to dishonor. Here I'm talking about um, the, the marriages. Mm. The Bible, when you read the book of First Peter chapter 3 from verse 7, it reads as follows. Husband likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessels and as being here together of the grace of life, that your prayer may not be hindered. You see now, mm. when you look at marriage, marriage is likened to the relationship we have with the church with Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So even in marriages, because marriage is a mirror of the relationship between church, church. and Jesus, wow. when there's a dishonor in that in, in marriage, little people, your prayers are, are hindered. Oh. So that's the <sighs> impact of dishonor. You, 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 you may think you'll fast away certain things, you'll pray away certain things, <laughs> but when you dishonor your husband or dishonor, dishonor your wife, just dishonoring that, because we say that is a mirror of the church. That's 
So in other words, it, it's God who said, honor your wife. Hallelujah. It's not your, <laughs> your ancestor. It's God. So when you dishonor your wife, you are, not dis you are dishonoring God. Mm. Oh. In that way, God is saying, oh, you don't understand how I operate. Mm. In that way, I won't even hear your prayer. Your prayer will be hindered. I think most of, of our brothers and sisters are missing that part, you know, to, to say. I think our marriages, especially for us Christians, are failing because we, we are failing to recognize that this marriage is a direct representation of the relationship the church has with Jesus Christ. And the, the failure to recognize and acknowledge that has brought about mayhem. <laughs> in our in our relationships, in our marriages, in, in our daily livings. Because since I choose to dishonor my wife, it means I'm dishonoring Christ Himself. You see. And if 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 we were to look at that at, at this at that uh, picture, we are basically saying me choosing to dishonor my wife is the same as Christ choosing to dishonor me. Yes. You see. So it's, 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 it's the same thing. But we, because we don't have that understanding, we treat our wives, we treat our marriages as, you know, as, as much as we want to treat them because we have no understanding of what we are losing. And now, because I love what the word of God says, it says, because I dishonored her, and that means my prayers are hindered. So I cannot pray away certain things. Actually, in honor, we learn and we understand that there are certain things that I don't even need to pray for, but it's simply honoring certain people, honoring the people that are around me, honoring my wife, honoring my brothers and sisters, honoring the leadership, you know, honoring the, the heads. We, we understand and we clearly know that certain things are placed in accordance because they are working for my good since I'm choosing the, the way of honor. That's, true. That's why we read Honor all people. Amen. God sometimes will send an angel. <laughs> she will just sit next to you in the church. Mm. Because you have a tendency, you don't greet people, you are not nice <laughs> to people. Your angel is there, he's just waiting for you to shake the hands oh. and to release your things. Ah. But because you are full of yourself, <laughs> the angel sits after church, you don't even talk to the angel mm. and it leaves. You just leave like that. And then from there you, you go back to prayer, three days fasting. <laughs> You see, because you don't honor all men. So we're talking about honor all men. So now let's, let's look at honor. If you dishonor the body of, of Christ, mm. you, you will destroy your body. That's true. That's we'll true. take our scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 17 to 20, 22. We normally read these verses when we're taking Holy Communion. <laughs> we said marriage is a mirror mm. or is likened to the relationship between Christ and the church. Let's see now when you now you dishonor the body of Christ now. Mm. What happens to you? Mm. Now, where we, let's quickly read from verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Mm. Therefore, who's, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let man let a man examine himself. So let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner drinks a judgment to himself, not discerning the, the Lord's body. Mm. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, oh. and many sleep. Let's jump to the oh. tree. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment, and the rest I will set in order when I come. Ah. <laughs> when you read this verse, there are many things here. Yeah. Firstly, you could see the Corinthians, they didn't respect the body. Amen. They didn't, did not respect each other. They would rush to the Holy Communion. They would not wait for each other. Mm. There was no unity in the body. That's the first thing. So it means those who came first, it was about themselves. Mm. So hence Paul said, no, 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 why can't you wait for others? You see, <laughs> that's the first dishonor. Now you are dishonoring the unit of the body. Mm. That's on its own. Oh, it attracts sickness to your body. Because mm. now you are dishonoring the body. When you think you are dishonoring other brethren, mm. I said to you, we are 
just parts or a unit in the body. You can't say I don't need an eye because the hands is important. When you dishonor another part, you are dishonoring the body because the body is made up of all these parts. So in this case, you could see they could not wait for each other. They would rush to do things. Hands posted, wait for each other. And secondly, the, the dishonor again here by living in sin, you dishonor the body. Now, the result of that dishonor, the Bible says some of you are sick. Some of you are even weak. You, re, you, you notice you're always weak. You are praying your tongue, but you're, you're forever weak. Mm. It is some of you that are even dead because of dishonoring the board of Christ. Mm. So these are the impact of dishonor. Faithfulness. And, 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 and when you look at the history in the church of Corinth, the, the, first, le, the first epistle that Paul wrote, he was dealing mainly with, with, with the, the, the the disagreements that were in between the there was no unity amongst them. Now, uh, when you read from the first chapter, and if, 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 even when on chapter twelve, yes. when he deals with the giftings, and he also mentions the part that we are all parts of the body, and every part is important in in its own function. You see, and 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 in 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 him dealing with so others, were saying, "I am of, of Apollos, I am of Paul, I am of so and so." And he says, I, "I'm glad that I didn't baptize any of you except for the house of." And then he mentions and he continues in in that, and he says, "Is Christ divided amongst himself? Why are you doing these things now? Because they are divided, they are." gossiping each other, they are fighting amongst each other. Imagine, there's, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And imagine a body fighting against itself, wow. the immune system acting up on, 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 on itself, the, you know, you know <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, the, the disaster, the, the drainage that body takes, you know, it's so draining and so frustrating in that body because they are not in accord, they are not one. The, the, the hand wants to go that way, you know, the head wants to go that way, you know, the, 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 the legs want to go the other way, and you know, everything wants to, you know, the, there's this discord. And, he is, and, and in that, Paul then says, if you want to eat of the body and you want to partake of this body, understand one thing, the body needs to be one. And because you have dishonored the body of, of Christ, some of you have fallen sick and some of you have fallen weak. Some of you have even passed on because they dishonored. And that is why Paul writes also in the church of Corinth, he deals with the sin of sexual immorality because you are dishonoring what God has created. Remember, we are made in the image of God. So you are dishonoring the image of God. Yo, I hear you. On this. You know what, what I've learned, man of God? Um, what I would want to say, never ever comment about the body of Christ unless you love it. Ne <laughs> never ever comment about other men of God, other ministries, unless you are coming from the point of love. Of love. We have a tendency just to comment and say things mm. and we are dishonoring the body of Christ. Mm. Like I said, you know, there are other, we, we might be pastors together, mm. but we rank differently. That's true. I might be a system in the particular area. I might be the man who holds the key, the authority in the air. Mm. You just comment on Facebook, say whatever you want to say. <laughs> I've learned not to comment. Mm. I've learned to shut up my mouth. Because sometimes you say things not knowing. You heard the word complaining, fake prophet, fake teacher, now you follow them, you start saying names. Mm. Did God reveal that the person is a fake prophet? Mm. If not yet, shut your mouth up. Mm. Because you might be insulting the system. You see, you, in that way, you, you, you're dishonoring the, the body of Christ. Anyway, God has never called us to, uh, to be pastors for denomination. He has called us to be pastors in the body of Christ. But we then, he then places us in locals. Because in local, it's, it's an expression of the, the body of the, of the universal church. So there's so much disrespect nowadays we disrespect each other we think i'm in a better church you are not in you are not in a better church we say a lot of things and we're dishonoring the body My church is and better 
your ch- my pastor, because he can do one, two, three, yours can't do one, two, three. We look down upon the men of God. So in a way, we are equating God's calling to what this other one can do. Yes. And God is vast and wide and deep. Yes. You know, who can understand the depth of God? Yes. Who under- understand the width of God? God is infin- in, in, in his in, in his infinity infinite god that's true infinite god you know we 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 can never clearly conceive nor perceive the fullness of god so we are equating what god is and god's callings in our lives based on what you can do because you 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 prayed for so and so and he rose from the dead therefore i'm not the man of i'm not a true man of god because i couldn't raise one from the dead yes. i'm and we i we fail to understand that my calling is not about raising the dead maybe my calling is about impacting nations you know in a particular, in a particular way, way. Okay. yeah we dishonor we, that's a lack of honor we might be all prophets mm. but I might, I might be called to to be a prophet of of, of all nations mm. we're now a prophet of a particular religion that's of a, of a region because of lack of understanding you want to compete and you start dissing each other I might be an apostle, all of us are apostles, but we have called differently. And the authority we hold is different. Just like Paul was uh, an apostle. To you the need me. You, in, in, in your view, you think you don't need me. Mm. And you disregard me. That's and true. you need me. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Let's continue for this. Let's continue for, <laughs> yeah, for the sake of time. Our next point, we're talking about um, dishonor dilutes your love of God. Mm. Our scripture reading is First John 4, verse 20. We know all this. We know this, this verse. The way you honor your all, let me read it. Um, can we, 4, verse 20, can you just read it, my, my brother? Or let's say, if someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. Amen. For if we don't love people we can see, how can you love God whom we cannot see? Mm. So what God is saying when you honor men, you are honoring me. When you are dishonoring men, you are dishonoring me. Amen. So you see now, you think you, that's what the Bible says, they say we are a liar. Because hmm. the key, we have a tendency to want to honor those who are above us. <laughs> who, those of, who are gifted more than us. You look down upon others. And God says, then you are a liar. Hmm. Because now you, you rank people. You use class to, class to, 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 to honor people. Hmm. You need, Peter says, you need to honor all wow. men. That's the key. The high, the low, and the middle. Yes. Mm. The yeah. next one, honor is the path to heaven. I like this verse. How mm. is the path to heaven? Let's read it. Can I read, quickly read this one? I want to get the context. Matthew chapter 25 from verse 36. Now, I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, you came to me. Then the Russians will answer him saying, Lord, when did you see, when did he see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did you see a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one, to one of the least of this, my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, these are two groups, those who honor all men, those who don't honor all men. Listen to this, the second group. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, I hope I'm on the right, on the right hand, depart from me, you, you cast into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you did not Take me in naked, you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. They then ask the same question. Then they also, also will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or taste or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, I should I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And this will go away into everlasting punishment, but the rehashes into eternal life. Mm. You see now, when we honor people, we're honoring God. In your mind, when you help me, you think you're helping me. You're not doing it to me. 
you are doing to God. When you reject me, when you disregard me, you think you are doing it to me. You're not doing it to me. I didn't send myself. You know, I've noticed sometimes the church, people come, they are, they, are, they are waiting the man of God who's the head to pray for them. And the man of God asked Pastor began to go pray for people. Someday, I said, no, I want the man of God to pray for me. <laughs> they lower their guard, even their faith, because in their mind, they want this man of God to lay hands on them. Whilst God has hidden your things in Pastor Pagan, but because in your eyes, Pastor Pagan is younger than you, or you even know when she received Christ, <laughs> If you know perhaps doesn't have a, theolo- a degree in theology, then you, you then think, ah, this one can't pray for doesn't me. It doesn't know anything. <laughs> you see, we, that's how it is. In this case, it's when we neglect people, not honoring people. You see what, what, what the end result? Mm. The Bible says, they ask, when did he do it? I said to you, an angel may come, mm. and you will neglect the angel. Can the angel go to a solution? In this case, these two groups, there are those who honor everyone. The Bible says those are righteous ones. The left hand side one, they dishonor everyone. Mm. Then they ask, when did we see you naked? But no, these people represent me. Mm. They, are created, they are created in my likeness, in my image. Mm. When you neglect them, you are neglecting me. Mm. You see? So honor will create a path to heaven. <laughs> when you go to heaven, you honor Jesus. You, most religion, they neglect Jesus. They want to honor God. <laughs> they don't understand this kingdom. The whole is built upon honor. That's true. Churches, they don't experience the supernatural. They dishonor the move of the Holy Spirit. Mm. You dishonor the move of the Holy Spirit, you dishonor the supernatural. Supernatural will never take place. You, you know, as you, are, as you are mentioning these things, in Fundis, I'm, I'm realizing that actually... It, we find it more difficult to honor because we are a disobedient generation, you see. But if we were an obedient generation, honor would be the simplest thing we can ever do. Um, just imagine, actually, the entire subject, it, it points to one thing. Simple honor. And if we were to obey God truthfully and honestly so, and, and Paul says this to, to, to Timothy, um, I, I believe he says this to Timothy, he says the, the entire law points to one thing, which is love. Yes. So in, in, in love we learn to honor. And I, I, I think we'd be deceived if we were to say we, 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 we obey God if we fail to obey those who we see. That is Amen. why, Amen. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So if we fail to hear and listen to those that we are with, mm. that we see, simply because we are looking at them and we think they are not of our own standards, That's you see, yeah. and then we assume or rather we presume that there is no God in them. There is God even in the smallest child. Jesus says, for such is the kingdom of heaven. When you look at these children, he was, he was with the children, he says, the kingdom of God is for such. That's so right. those whom you look down at the most, the kingdom of God is there. Yes. Honor promises success and prolonged life. You know mm. the wisdom of God. When you read Ephesians 6, 2 to 3. Amen. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commanded commandment with the promise. If you honor your father and mother, Things will go well with you and you will have <laughs> long life on earth. You know, I was just talking with my wife and say, you, you know how difficult to raise a, a child? Mm. You don't sleep. The sleeplessness, all that. Amen. And when they are grown up, they dishonor you. Mm. God says, that's so evil. You know, your parent had the potential to kill you. He didn't do that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So when you don't honor, God took that privilege. Oh. He said, yeah. it's not upon me for you to get to 80. I'm giving it to your parents. If you dishonor your parent, mm. you would have dishonored me. You can be a powerful man of God, prayerful, someone who fast, but if you dishonor your parent, you will die young. It's the first law. It's a first law. Promise. You see, God works mm. with honor. It's a systematic God. You, you cannot pray for God, I want to be live until I'm 90. No, no, no. Don't even waste your, your energy. <laughs> Just honor your... Adhere to the principle. Adhere to the principle. Oh, then yes. you will live long. In that case, God is saying, it's not upon me. I took it and I put it to your parents. Mm. It's up to you. When you dishonor, because now there are so many rights 
<laughs> you know, Satan is very wise. He, that's why our, this generation now, we die young. Mm, that's true. These, these rights and all those things, Satan doesn't do something just for, for nothing. The There's a purpose. Mm. He wants these kids to dishonor their parents mm. when, because they are using their rights. When they dishonor them, they die young. Yes. Even if as a parent, because to me, it's, it seems as if a parent is, parenting is an office as well. Mm. <laughs> Even if your mom wants you to live long, but because you dishonor the office, the principle says you must die young. Must die young. Yo. That's a principle. Yo, from this. From so you see how important to respect, <laughs> not to talk back to your parent. <laughs> to res I'm being honest, to respect That's them. True. That's true. It's one of those that I know we neglect. We said honor protects you from poverty. Mm. Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth. With the first thing and the best part of your all income. Then your barns will be full. Mm. Your vast will overflow with fresh wine. Oh. You want to protect your God to protect you from poverty? Mm. Honor God with your, with your income. In this kingdom, not everything you pray for. I know we pray for money. Have you honored God in that area? Amen. There are certain principles, if you break them in the kingdom, they work against you. Whether you are aware and not aware. Um, of course, we are talking about honor. Amen. We are living in the last generation. There are a lot of things that are happening that are wrong. Mm. God warns us. We, 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 sh we shouldn't walk honor everything. I wanted us to look at a few things that uh, God allows us not to honor them. You can have a man of God or your leader who wants or in, who instructs you to sin. Can you still honor them? Mm. Nowadays, people, um, you've seen how men of God, they sleep with their congregants. congregants. They do all sorts of wrong things. And the congregants, because they, they, are, they are so fearful, they want to honor them. Mm. No. Yeah, the Bible says, such people you cannot honor. Because remember, I'm not just honoring you, I'm honoring God. God. But if you are doing wrong things yourself, why should I honor you? Hmm. So just before, just, just before we close on this, because of our time. Yeah. So we honor first and foremost God, yes. then we are able to honor men. Yes. Our main priority though is God. Yes. So we cannot honor men while we fail to honor, honor God. God. So we need to honor God okay. first, then we are able to honor men. Yes, sir. If you look at this instance, it's Joseph. Potiphar's wife was the, the wife of the, the, king. the king. But Joseph, because Potiphar's wife wanted Joseph to sin, mm. he refused. Mm. He said, no ways. Amen. You see, same with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were commanded to worship a false god by a king. They refused. Mm. Daniel was forbidden to pray. He refused. He said, no ways. So, oh, hallelujah. Peter and John, if you look, read Acts 4.19, they were ordered to stop preaching and gathering. Ish, this one. It's so relevant. <laughs> they were ordered to stop preaching and gathering. And they said, do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we've seen and heard. So, we need to honor people but we are not blind. Amen. We don't honor wrong things. Amen.